Hello, you guys. Welcome back to Lily Reed. In today's video, we are here to do our July wrap up. July was a good month to me, I must say. I read 18 books in July and I want to come and tell you about them. I don't know about you, but I feel like July lasted pretty long. Like I look at some of these books sitting here in front of me and I'm like, baby, I feel like I read that months ago, but I read it in July. The first thing I want to discuss that I read was not for any video and it is Miracle Creek by Angie Kim. So this book is a courtroom drama. We start off and we are following this couple that has a a business like a wellness type of business where you do like plunges that that are gonna like save you basically like uh like chambers like oxygen chambers anyway there's an explosion and two people die and there is a woman by the name of Elizabeth she is on trial for murder because they believe she killed the two people intentionally. She set fire to this oxygen chamber and her son and another person are now dead and she is on trial. And in this book, we are following all parties involved. We're following the people who own it. We're following the people who are a part of the business. We're following so many people to get to the truth of what happened in Miracle Creek. Who knew I could enjoy a courtroom drama? He this is usually my issue with courtroom dramas. I feel like they drag and I'm just like, I want to know who did it. I want to know who did it. I want to know what's going on. But I like the different types of stories we got, the different types of characters. I like sometimes we were in the courtroom, but then when we were in certain characters' head, they would tell us things that happened before. I just love the way that this story was told. So put me in the number of people who enjoyed this book. I'm going to go ahead and give this book four out of five stars I enjoyed myself and you know I will be picking up more from Angie Kim I know a lot of people don't like happiness falls which is her next book but maybe I will so we will see but Miracle Creek I still think if you have not gotten to this you should it's quite interesting and it has some interesting commentary about parenting about ableism Thought it was really really well done the next book I read is a Sophie Kinsella do you guys want to know a random fact about me. Sophie Kinsella is my most read from author of any author. I don't know. This is just a weird tidbit. I've read more Sophie Kinsella books than I've read of any other author. Author, But anyways, uh, this month I read Sophie Kinsella, My Not So Perfect Life. So in this book, we are in London and we are following a woman who is trying to make it up the career ladder, but things aren't really going like she wants to. She sees everyone around her living these glamorous lives and her life is is not that she's kind of a flunky at her job so she gets on Instagram and she lies about her life she like tries to find like she tries to romanticize her life but really it's just lies and one day she gets fired and she has to go work on her family's farm and this is just her story about her trying to find herself this book was long <laughs> the perfect word to describe this book was long like I just kept feeling like Sophie Kinsella which is adding plot points and adding plot points to like like pad the stats to get the word count up and I'm like this book can end it got to the last hundred pages and I said this book can end like we kind of get it but overall I did have a good time with this book I am going to give this book about 3.75 stars it was interesting and you guys know I love my little chiclet but like I don't think this is Sophie Kinsella's like strongest outing but I enjoyed myself the next book we have is the Lily Reads book club pick for July and that is the Kiss Countdown by Etta Easton. So Etta Easton is an event organizer and she wants to like branch off on her own because she got fired from the big business event coordinating job that she had. So she's trying to branch off on her own and start her own business. So she's at her coffee shop getting her coffee and she runs into this guy and you know they hit it off whatever but she goes about her day. Well, she gets home and she realizes that her apartment is going up on her rent. She's paying her mother medical bills and she don't got no job. So her life is just crumbling. Her life is falling apart. And then she runs into her ex-boyfriend and sees that he has a new girlfriend. And so she's just like, I don't even want to let him know I'm not doing well. So the guy from the coffee shop before is back at the coffee shop. And she's just like, 
this is my boyfriend and that kind of starts them on this fake dating situation I say you read it and figure out what else is gonna happen I give this book five out of five stars I think this is my favorite romance book of the year so far I really enjoyed this this book had a bunch of tropes in it but I think it did it all well as well as having some heart I thought it was cute I thought it was well written I enjoyed myself through and through five out of five stars for the kiss countdown Etta Easton already announced her next book and I will be there too for the next one yes god the next book we have is Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies in this book we are following a character named Emily Wilde as she does some investigation some you know research on the faux people on fairies and so this takes her to this small little town and she starts quickly getting wrapped up in the town shenanigans and she starts having some you know misadventures with the fairies and along for the ride is her academic rival and she starts to feel like there's more to him that meets the surface and this is about them trying to you know hash out their differences and come together to defeat a common evil this book was cute I'm gonna give the cozy people one check for this one this one worked for me is it ever gonna get like five stars from me no and I do have a confession to make I was at Target. I was at Target and there was one book left of the sequel. So I went ahead and bought the sequel. Let me go get it. I know I said I didn't think I was gonna do it, but I did it. It was something about only one being left and I was just like, ah, I might as well, I might as well go ahead and do it. I don't know, 2024 might be my like sequels era. I'm reading a lot of sequels with Amari coming out this month, some stuff, like I'm reading sequels, so you know what? I said let's go for it and I like the covers I like the covers and you know I don't read enough fantasy I think and so just to you know have that there for the very few times I'm in the mood for fantasy I think will be nice the next book we have is pod in this book we are following um this main dolphin character by the name of EA and she is old she is past her prime and she's like the people in my dolphin you know pod don't even know all the stuff that happened to get us to this point so EA takes us back in time and tells us everything that has happened in her dolphin community as well as other communities around her that have gotten them to the point where they are in her elder years and so in this book we are just following the different pods in the dolphin world and the ways that they communicate with each other and the ways that you know they try to find safety and comfort in a home and love as well as how human beings play a part in these uh underwater animals lives I thought this was really well done also I thought this book was ambitious I enjoyed myself this had me thinking about animals in a way that I don't usually think about animals I'm gonna go ahead and give this book four out of five stars I enjoyed enjoyed this book and I also think out of all the books I'm going to show you this is the book that like I think more people should read um this book there there is such an audience for this book that just hasn't found this book and you should you should pick this book up there are so many books that like I read and I'm just like I am not 100% the audience but if people would like reach further and not just go based off the book talk recommendations and like reach out to find what they would like, they would really like this book. And that I think people should pick up Pod by Laleen Paul. The next book we have is, yeah, Death on the Nile. I read an Agatha Christie book this month. So in this book, we are following Hercule. We're with Hercule Perriot, and he is going to be solving a crime that happens on a cruise ship on the Nile. But first, we got to figure out how we get on the Nile because this book does not start off with Hercule and it doesn't start off on the now. We are first following this like heiress socialite type of woman. She has a lot of money and everyone is expecting her to get married because that's just the times. Like if you are a woman with a lot of money, people expect you to get a husband so he can kind of be in control of that money. But she doesn't really want to marry someone. But one day her friend tells her that she's getting married. Her friend's like, I found a man of my dreams. I found a man of my dreams. She said, that's great. Now he's my man. So she runs off and marries her best friend. Friend, man. <laughs> and basically they get married 
And so they're going on a trip to the on the Nile and the woman whose man she took she shows up too and that's when our our woman our socialite she goes to Hercules and tells him that hey this woman is stalking me I think she's going to kill me and so like can you be on the up and up he said I really don't do that like there's been no murder she's really done nothing to you and you kind of did her wrong so like what are you what do you want me to do well the girl end up dead the girl ends up dead and they trying to figure out who done it? This book is filled with a bunch of people dying, bunch of people getting shot. I enjoy this. I enjoy Agatha Christie. What do you want me to say? What do you want me to do? It works. And it's just so interesting. You guys have to understand. Agatha Christie is building the blocks. It's like when you go back and watch an old movie and you think to yourself, Oh, this movie is kind of predictable. Oh, I've seen people do this before. You gotta put it in its context. That like, this person is doing this thing before anybody else was doing this thing. It's like when you go back and watch The Wire, the TV show The Wire or something. Like, nobody was doing this before them. And like, that's the same thing reading an Agatha Christie novel. Like, she's creating the tropes, the mystery and uh thriller tropes that we see everywhere she's creating these tropes and no one else is doing it so i got it she can never get a 10 from me she can never get a 10 from me because she was nasty and of course of course when you read some agatha christie you're gonna get the bigotry you're gonna get the anti-semitism and the racism all oh, it's gonna be in here yes it will be but i am gonna give this book four out of five stars i enjoyed it the next book that we have is the seven year slip in the seven year slip we are following a woman who is dealing with the death of her aunt and her aunt leaves her an apartment that turns out to be a magical apartment. One day she goes back into the apartment and there is a man waiting for her. She realized this man is actually from the apartment seven years ago. This man lived in the apartment seven years ago and she has gone back in time seven years to when this man lived here and basically she has to live with him until he leaves or what or till she goes back to her timeline and in that they fall in love with each other. No. This one was not for me, dolls. There's many reasons why this isn't for me. I don't like the way the magic works. I think the premise is underutilized and poorly done. I don't like the writing. Did I say that? But I don't. I don't like the writing. Um, and most importantly, where's the romance aspect of this book? This book is insta-lovey as hell. I think a lot of people wanted to like this book, and so they've given this book good stars. But like with the book you got, why are you gagged? Are you gagged? I just don't, I don't understand it. I simply do not understand. These characters knew each other for a few days and all of a sudden we were supposed to believe they were so madly in love with one another. The magic is so like weird to the point where I don't even think it makes sense, honestly. Um, no, this one wasn't for me. Two out of five stars. This will be getting unhauled and will no longer be in my library. The next book I want to talk to you guys about is The Summer It Girl. Let me see if I can find it. I can. This is easy. Me and L. Kennedy kind of getting tight because I have read two L. Kennedy books. We have The Good Girl Complex, which is the first one. Then we have Bad Girl Reputation. And now we have The Summer It Girl, which is the third and final book in this series. This series is just about a bunch of people who live in a beach town. Some people come, some people live there permanently. It really doesn't even matter. And then falling in love. This one in particular is about this girl who comes to the beach town on summer vacation because her dad lives there. Um, and she decides that she wants to have a fling. She wants to have a summer fling. It won't matter because she's going to go back to school once the summer is over and she meets Meets this guy who was kind of a playboy of the town and he ends up moving in next door because he's house sitting a house next to her and this is about them falling in love over a summer this worked I'm sorry L Kennedy writes in such a like 2012 type of way like 2012 tumblr fiction type of way that I eat up this is such like her books are such a fun time for me I don't know why I and people don't like them people I'm the only person who's bigging these books up and they not for everybody they not highbrow literature they're not even well written I just enjoy them so I'm giving this book four out of five stars actually 
more on L. Kennedy. The next vlog I'm putting up, a little bit more on L. Kennedy. We'll discuss that. But this worked for me. What do you want me to do? Which means that overall, I gave the first book five out of five stars. The second book I gave four. Giving this one four, like... <laughs> They work for me. What do you want me to do? The next one is Una out of order. So in this book, we are following a character named Una who is stuck in a time warp. On her 18th birthday, she starts to time travel. So she is going to live a life just as long as probably anybody else's life. But the problem is she is going to live that life out of order. So after 18, she might be 30, she might be 32. And then from 32, she might be 24. She's just gonna live her entire life out of order. And this is her dealing with, you know, Una out of order, living her life out of order and the di different decisions that she makes at different times in her life affecting her and, you know, the current state of her life. This book is such a downer. And I said this in the vlog, I talked about it. No book owes me fun. No book owes me joy, but I do think we gotta have a balance. Can we have a balance? This book has no balance. This book is sad all the way through. I feel like we didn't get to know Una as a character very much. We really didn't get to sit in the idea of this story. This book had a lot of reflections, Una reflecting, and never did it really feel like I was in the story. I was seeing Una, what Una gets up to, except in like one time jump. So I'm gonna give this book three out of five stars. I, I'm actually knocking it down 0.5 from the vlog where I read it in. This one didn't really work out. Maybe at a different time. I'm definitely gonna keep this book because I do think it has an audience and I would lend it out to people. And I think I'm gonna revisit it one day, but ugh, that one wasn't a true winner for me. The next book that I, you guys don't know that I read that I read was Christina Lauren, The True Love Experiment. In this book, we are following a woman that ends up going on a game show to find love because she believes it will help her sell romance books. Am I remembering that correctly? Out of all the books that I've read, this is probably the most forgettable to me. Like I don't even, I'm not even quite sure I remember that. She's a romance author and she gets offered to be on a reality show because they need someone to do it. So she becomes a part of this reality show. And in doing it, the guy who, the guy who creates the reality shows, they kind of hit it off and get to know each other. And that's who her like love interest is. That's the true love experiment. All of this is kind of like resting on the, ooh, this book. The Soulmate ex the soulmate equation, both of the, this is, these two books go together. So like this guy created this, um, app basically with like, you send in like your DNA or something and they give you like somebody who's going to be your, you know, your forever. And that's basically what she's doing. She's using her matches to get on this dating show. And that's what it's about. People really like this book. When I log this book on Goodreads, people really enjoy this book. I have an issue, this goes back to like my issue with magic, with like unexplained magic. A issue I have with dating show books is that we're never, they never feel like you're a part of a dating show. Can I get someone to make a dating show book where like we're really on a dating show, like we're getting to know like all the people that they might be with? It feels like people like wrote me in like, here's a dating show romance and then they just drop it. They just completely drop it and just go off. There's just like one guy who they obviously want to be with. Like I want a true dating show romance, but this was just fine to me. I'm going to be quite honest with you. I enjoyed the soulmate equation way, way more. This one I thought I gave, I ended up giving it like three out of five stars. I don't know. Let's move on to, uh, Deli Wed's Destiny. This is also kind of a forgettable one by Tommy Obaro, unfortunately. So in this book, we are following three women who went to college together and who were friends. One of the women's daughter is getting married and that is what is bringing all of these women back together. Are they going to, where are they going to be? All of these women are headed back to Lagos for the wedding and this is about them all being in different places as adults. So they knew each other as like, you know, young adults in college and this is about, you know, 20 years later, where are all of these women, really 30 years later, where are all of these women at? My biggest issue with this book is number one, it is far too flowery and the book 
doesn't spend any time actually being the book. It just wants to give you flowery sentence after flowery sentence. You ever read a book and it feels like the author doesn't actually want to write the book that they said they were going to write for you? That is this book. It feels like every time there was a moment for interesting storytelling, interesting characters, this book just evades it, just evades it. There's a moment in this book that is supposed to be filled with so much tension. Actually, the tension is already there. These characters should be coming to a head and it just fizzles into nothing and you're just like what was the point of this then one of the characters completely is like missing in the middle of this book this book just didn't come together to me to be a solid book it was written the words on the page are well the sentences are crafted well but I just feel like overall the story isn't there and if you think you're reading a book about Delhi wedding Delhi wedding destiny you're not they're not even in the story to the end and then it's just like okay who cares about this woman it just it didn't all come together for me it was choppy ah but it started off so well if you read the first 50 pages of this book you are going to enjoy it. it sets up for this perfect like auntie experiences this aunt these aunties coming together they're all having you know issues in their life and you're expecting this perfect crescendo but it will never come I promise you it'll never come but I did give it three out of five stars that's what I feel comfortable giving it I might say 2.75 I didn't hate reading it that's the thing I didn't hate reading it because I kept expecting something to happen that just it never happened next book is Vera Wong's unsolicited advice for murders in this book, we are following an old lady named Vera Wong. She owns a tea shop. One day she goes downstairs in her tea shop and she sees a dead man on her floor and she decides she is going to solve the murder. She finds three suspects and she's like, I'm gonna figure out which one of you killed this man. And this is about Vera Wong basically meddling into all of these people's lives in order to solve this murder. I enjoyed this book. I enjoyed it so much. Yes, I pre-ordered the sequel. Who would have thought? I was so nasty to Jesse Q. Satanto for the Dow A for Auntie series, but this is proof that just because Kenya doesn't like one of your books, I don't write you off. If you give me an interesting premise and I think there's potential in you, I can enjoy you. And I said Jesse Q. Satanto has some good idea. Like, I think something could work with her, and it did. I'm going to read this series. I think to the wheels fall off. I enjoyed this series. I think everything that Jessica Satanto did wrong with Dale for aunties with the aunties, she fixed with Vera Wong. Vera Wong is intelligent. She still has that, you know, like being an immigrant and not really being sure of what her place is in society as an older woman. But it also, she's smart. She's quick. She knows what she's doing. I enjoyed it. Four out of five stars. Every, like, we had a good reading. I feel like I keep saying four out of five stars. There really was no dud. The seven year slip is our only dud. The last book, Accidentally Engaged. So in this book, we are following a woman who is a bread maker. She wants to be a bread maker. She wants to have her own bakery, which really goes against her parents because she has strict Muslim plant parents who want her to come work for the family business, but she doesn't want to do that. But their biggest thing is, is they want her to get married. So they try to set her up on a marriage. There is a guy who is coming from England who is going to work for her father's business and the her father wants to set him up with her. They end up living in the same apartment building and this is about them like realizing that they are, you know, their wedding was, you know, arranged, but maybe they can be a couple and them learning to love each other outside of their meddling parents. This book started off rough. At first, the writing was not my style. I found the writing to be choppy, wordy, no. But I stuck in there. And baby, after the, after the 150 page mark, I was kind of kicking my feet up. I was kind of kicking my feet up. The ending of this turns very like sleuthy, like cozy mystery-ish, which I also thought was really good. Like this is one of those books that you got to wait for the author to get her footing. And then I really think she hits her stride. And this is one of those books that I'm really happy I didn't DNF because it was worth it. In the end, I gave this book four out of five stars. Two more books and I'm done. Two more books and I'm gonna go. Y'all can get out my face. The Rehearsal. So in this book, we are stuck in a time where, you guys, basically, 
my reading month can be, you know, summed up as time warps. Everybody was in a goddamn time warp. We're in another time warp with the rehearsal. So in this book, we are following a couple that is going to get married. They're both from different sides of the tracks. The girl is more rugged. Her family is more homely. The guy, he comes from a rich family. And basically, both of them are keeping secrets. Both this, this fian, these two, this couple, they're keeping secrets from each other. And one day during the wedding weekend these secrets come out and they have this huge argument well they wake up the next day and they relive the day over and they quickly realize there is something that is happening in this day that they are going to have to fix in order for their life to continue on this book is like an anti-romance book and that's why a lot of people I think don't enjoy it, but I did enjoy it. Did I find this book to go on a bit too long and to be repetitive? Yes, but I think I find that with all time warp stories, they just get repetitive and that's what this book 100% did. But I enjoyed the message, message of this book and I enjoyed reading a romance book that was kind of raw and honest and real and really asked the reader to think should these characters be together and really have two hero, a hero and a heroine working through through their drama and their issues on page because oftentimes in a romance book everything is flowery nobody really thinks about the optics of them being together like if they say they're gonna be together they're gonna be together but this book really makes you like get into the weeds of should these two people actually be together so I did give that book 3.75 stars and the best book I read this month and probably all year maybe the best book I've read in the last five years goes to The Bee Sting by Paul Murray. I love this book so much. I am going to get this book in paperback because I just don't think I want to physically read it in um hardcover. It was just like, it's a big book and it's kind of hard to like read. I love this book. In this book, we are just basically following an Irish family going through money troubles and them basically keeping secrets from each other in order to keep their family together. And that's all I'm going to say, but this book is almost 700 pages of pure, pure, pure bliss because it was so amazing to read a book where someone knows how to write, someone knows how to write, someone knows how to tell stories. Everything in this book is intentional. I think this book would be even better on reread. I loved this book. I'm gonna say I loved it. This book is 100% gonna be in my top 10 books of the year. I hope I read a better book this year, but I don't think I will. It's just like, ugh, everything about it was perfect. That's it. Those are all of the books that I read this month, and I will see you guys next month for another wrap up.